Welcome to Lake Cumberland Amateur Radio Association. You can find us at lcara.net, on Facebook, on YouTube, and on Instagram. If you're enjoying the videos we're producing here at Elcara, please help our club out by hitting that subscribe button. Also, give us some feedback on our videos. Click the like button, share with anybody who may find it interesting, and be sure and hit the bell icon to make sure you get notified of the next video release. Welcome back, everybody, to the Abandoned Repeater Site, part number nine. I'm KY4BDP Brian. And today we want to take up the topic of adding power to this new repeater location. Now, as those of you that are fans of this series uh, are probably wondering, we just had commercial power added to the site. Why aren't we using that? Well, we've run into some problems with uh, getting it uh, inspected and so forth. So in the meantime, what we're going to do is add the batteries, which we would have done anyway. We've added a couple of those. And we wanted to monitor the battery usage and then add solar power to this particular setup. And this is a controller that we just purchased off of Amazon. We'll add this to the website if you're interested in, which, uh, in buying one similar. And AC4DM has put together a test rig here where not only we have it fused, but we also have a uh, large gauge wire going to the batteries and we have an auxiliary power port possibly to power things like the controller. And so we're going to utilize this test rig for a while and then we're going to uh, install it properly into the rack with a proper rack panel. Now, any good installation that involves the tower requires planning. And the first thing you've got to do is take a look at your tower, take a look at uh, how you plan to climb it, as well as any obstructions, because we have to think about the solar panel and would it uh, potentially get in the way of anything. And so in this particular case, we're surveying that tower. And AC4DM has uh, the gift to be able to visualize a lot of this in his head, uh, because he's done it so many times before. Now here in the back of one of the trucks, we have a lot of the gear that we're going to utilize for the project. We have a couple of, uh, a pair of additional batteries that we're going to swap out, additional wire, tools of course, and we also have guide ropes that we're going to use, nylon ropes that we're going to use for hoisting the solar panel, which is quite heavy with all of the hardware attached to it, and uh, any other ancillary items that we think we might need. Now here's the solar panel in a different truck, and you can see here, uh, it's a panel that's not new. Uh, AC4DM had this laying around, as is common. He had purchased these panels some years ago and just hadn't gotten around to actually using them in a particular project. Well, we've used two of the panels in the emergency communications trailer and we're now going to put a panel up on the tower to help power the batteries, uh, replenish the, uh, uh, the current or the voltage in the batteries and so forth over time. And the great thing about these panels, you don't need a whole lot, uh, typically, to keep the battery up where it needs to be. In this particular case, he also had some heavy gauge wire that he can connect to the back of the panel. And he had about 65 feet of this, which will come down the tower, which will affix to the tower uh, with uh, nylon cable ties. And then obviously come into the actual shack and into the rack eventually. So we've got our solar panel, got our cabling all ready to go. Now what we have to do is think about some of the preparatory steps. Now one of the first steps we want to do is take the batteries out from the rack that we had been using and see where they were. I think they were at about 12.5 or something like that. So they hadn't fallen very much in about two weeks time. We're going to put fresh batteries in there, take the old ones and recharge those or uh, charge them back up. But we're actually going to feed these batteries that we're going to put in by the solar panel. See the bus bars there on the right so that we can hook two up in series. Par excuse me, parallel. Now, what Don is doing here is taking that 65 feet of heavy duty cabling that is attached to the panel and he's rolling it out so it'll go up the tower easily, it won't get tangled, and we won't have to worry about twists in the cable either. It'll come out nice and straight, which always works a treat when you're climbing these uh, towers. You don't want any of the uh, equipment to get snagged on anything. Here's our solar controller once again. Now this is before we even put it up on the tower and it's a cloudy day. So it, uh, since it's never really been out in the sun, it's never really had a chance to degrade. It's pretty much at full power. I think we rated it unloaded at 21 volts or something like that. So we're getting plenty of 
of, of power coming into the panel at that particular point uh, into the solar charger without even uh, uh, taking it all the way up on the tower just as a test. Here I'm outfitted with some tower climbing kit and uh, we're just about ready to get up on that tower but not just by myself. We actually enlisted the aid of KK4JPX Ben, uh, a longtime member. He's in his uh, harness as well and we're both going to go up the tower. This uh, solar panel is quite heavy and we wanted to make sure that uh, uh, one of us could be holding it in one way or another while the other one uh, utilized the U-bolts that we're going to use to the tower and so forth. So and it also helps with safety because uh, in case we had a problem up on the tower with this panel. Don's showing us uh, some of the uh, roping and uh, that we're going to use with the panel to keep it away from the tower and away from obstructions. Ben's got his tool belt uh, and his uh, uh, tool carrier as well in case we need any wrenches, which we will, and any other potential tools while we're up on that tower. So we're just about ready to go up on the tower at this point. Just a quick little picture. You can see the chain going across the top of the solar panel here and uh, we're actually going to affix one of the ropes uh, that Don has uh, to that chain so that we can hoist it up and we have a pulley that I'm going to take up on my belt and then attach to the tower and then KY4 CKP is going to pull on that rope to hoist the uh, solar panel up into place uh, utilizing that pulley and you can see the pulley there clamped to the tower uh, as a way of showing how it's going to be affixed. So we got the rope attached to the chain and we're ready to get up on this tower and then KY4CKP, once we get in place, will hoist that solar panel into position. So I'm beginning the ascent up the tower. And uh, the big thing here, folks, is even if you got a lot of things attached to you, you can see I've got the pulley, rope all right through it, is safety. Anytime you're gonna climb these towers, you need to make sure that you have at least two points of contact. Three would be better once you get to your place of work. But as you're climbing the tower, you wanna to make sure that you have those two points of connectivity with a harness and belt that you can trust. And so that's what I'm doing here. And as I go up the tower, I'll go up two or three positions and then readjust my points of connection. Ben is about to ascend the tower as well here, and you can see Don has the rope in his hands. Again, what we're trying to do is keep the panel away from the tower uh, as it is hoisted into position. Alrighty, so now we're on the back side of the old shack. You can see the rope coming over the top there, the red one, and uh, KY4 CKP is going to be holding on to that, and uh, the yellow rope, if you will, that I'm taking up with me uh, is also connected to the solar panel, and then KY4 CKP is also going to use that rope to actually hoist it into position. So Ben is making his way there on the bottom part of the tower, and I'm up pretty close to the position where we want the solar panel. We needed to make sure that we got it up and above the trees. Now this is winter, we're going into winter for sure, and the sun's not very high in the sky. What we wanted was about four hours of sunlight and or daylight on the solar panel just to keep the batteries up to where they need to be. Based on our calculations, it wasn't gonna take very much. This repeater's not hit all the time, so it's not utilizing those batteries uh, terribly much. So the solar panel should be able to charge it during the daylight hours uh, by having it facing south by southwest. And uh, so it's not going to get a lot of uh, daylight uh, in the morning, but it's definitely going to get daylight from about 12, 1 o'clock in the afternoon until the sun goes down in the evening. So Ben and I are up in our positions, and at this point we're now affixing the solar panel. You can see KY4CKP has hoisted the tower into position at this point so that we can start attaching the U-bolts. AC4DM had already attached the hardware on the top and the bottom of the solar panel so that we could connect it to the tower at this point. So now it's just uh, being safe and utilizing those U-bolts to attach it. So you can see here KK4JPX is uh, getting the lower U-bolt into place. I've already done that on the other side. And uh, here I'm trying to uh, get a little bit of video of us up there on the tower, but again, being safe and uh, you can see the black cable coming down as well as one of the existing uh, antenna cables just there to the left of the panel. So we're finishing up the connectivity at this point and uh, we'll be just about ready to remove all the, the rope and uh, descend the tower. We have it in place. So folks, if uh, you're looking for a great way to power your repeater without commercial power, a solar panel might be in your future. And uh, this is a way to install power to your repeater site and as time goes by we'll see how well this works and we're going to be adding additional equipment as well and to kind of wrap up 
I'm KY4 BDP Brian for the Lake Cumberland Amateur Radio Association. Stay tuned for more in the Abandoned Repeater Site series and other series. 73, everybody.